hill that I will die on is that men are easier than women almost 100% of the time. I'm gonna dumb it down for you and then give you an example. The word is a word where you describe a woman who acts like a man. An example of this, I'm gonna give a disclaimer before though. Although it might not seem it, I am very self-aware that I am a white, blonde, thin, conventionally pretty woman. Keep that in mind with this example. Are you sure? Not to be that guy, but you're wrong. That particular word that rhymes with Jabba the Hutt is actually used to describe a woman who's openly promiscuous, typically to the point of public disdain. The only difference between that intergalactic space gangster and a common streetwalker is that the streetwalker has enough good sense to charge a fee for her services while the oversized crime lord gives it away for free. But I'm not gonna lie, I am rather interested in hearing where exactly you got that definition referring to men. I mean, you're a blonde American woman who's a solid three and two sevenths with a poorly drawn tattoo that you obviously purchased impulsively and judging from the way you talk you're obviously a victim of our public education system so it could be anybody's guess but you don't need to drop out of high school to know that men do not have it easier than you but i am looking forward to hearing you make an ass out of yourself so please explain to me how men are the chiefs of interstellar crime syndicates however i still feel that it is valid for like literally any female like i just want to put that out there i know for a fact that when I go to a bar, to a club, if I wanted to leave with someone and sleep with somebody, I could. Like, it's always an option. Like, people talking, they say, huh? What are you talking about? This goes into my point of men being easy because once we present them with that opportunity that we're into them, we're down, whatever, they're always down. Like, 99% of the time, just don't get how we're easier when a guy doesn't even give a what your name is most of the time and he'll sleep with you and you get a reaction from people who say huh what do you talk about you know what i have to admit your mental gymnastics are borderline impressive i mean they're still completely stupid and nonsensical but almost impressive nonetheless now you are absolutely right you could go up to any man and ask him if he's down to play with your tainted box of festering diseases and he would probably be down but there is an eensy weensy teeny tiny little flaw in your argument. You are the ones choosing the men, not the other way around. If your logic had any merit whatsoever, there would be no such thing as incels. You know, the roughly 99% of men that you openly mock. Woman, I, I'm just gonna tell you up front, you're out of your league here. You shouldn't try and make an attempt to try to be smart or try to dumb down what you're saying because you're simply not capable of such complex tasks. You should leave that to the brain damaged. They do a significantly better job. The point I'm getting at is you can go up to a guy and be like, hey, come sleep with me. It's more than likely gonna be like, okay, a guy can't do that to a girl of the time as a guy you have to put forth a lot of effort to get a girl to want to sleep with you when on the flip side all we have to do is say we're down and then you're just gonna leave with us that sounds pretty damn easy to me i just never understood the whole oh my god she's such a slut she so ran through who did the running who did the running i don't know i hope that this makes sense like i just genuinely think guys are so much easier than girls will ever be nobody cares what you think I gotta admit, I feel like kind of an idiot here. I actually prepared an entire slideshow to explain how every single facet of what you spewed out was wrong. But then I realized you're not capable of understanding stick figures, so I wasted 20 minutes of my life. 20 minutes that I'm never gonna get back, so I'm kind of frustrated here. You're saying that a man has to work extremely hard to get the physique he wants, the money to buy the fashionable clothing, and the mental work to be able to be emotionally stoic and have his mental issues together. They also have to deal with you and your annoying quote unquote logic until you choose to sleep with them and all you have to do is show up spread your legs and subject that poor bastard to your stench but it's the men who are easier because you are the one doing the choosing there's no sense trying to justify it woman you are in fact job of the hut and in about 10 years you're gonna look like him too except without any of that enduring charm all women are 304s nope there is no such thing as traditional women anymore wrong women simply aren't worth it what does that even mean what? <laughs>
<laughs> wow, that is an awful lot of stupidity for such a short clip. Okay, I can't vouch for every single man on the planet, but I have never said that all women are 304, so don't put words in my mouth. My issue is with the celebration of 304 behavior. Women who openly brag about the number of men they sleep with as if it's some type of a badge of honor, it's been an infectious trend for the last decade and a half, if not longer. It's brainwashed an alarming number of women after they get used up, turn around and expect us to pick up the pieces after they're done having their fun. Second, I know there are traditional women. There's tons of them out there, mostly overseas. And to answer your question, it is not worth it because we have to put in an insane amount of work for a woman who's not even going to bother to give us the minimum amount of respect. And it's not like we've been quiet about this. We are virtually screaming it from the mountaintops, but you're too busy blaming us for all of your problems, so you're not gonna listen anyway. I am so tired of all of this negativity. Are you going to insist that masculinity is about growth, suffering, and overcoming difficult things? And then just not date because it's hard? Are some of you really so pessimistic and self-hating that you will just resign yourself to never feeling love and affection? Are you really going to sit here and insist that you have all of the answers to dating and then just refuse to pass those answers on to a woman who is ready and willing to please you? Who are you talking at? Oh yeah, and men are absolutely ecstatic over the sheer amount of negativity thrown our way simply because we exist. Really makes our day. We can't get enough of it. Just so you know, we're embracing our masculinity, working through our issues and becoming stronger both inside and out because we want to do it for us. We want to feel better about ourselves and we're not giving up dating because it's hard. It's because we're too busy becoming better people to waste our valuable time on a woman who wouldn't give us the time of day when she was in her prime. And newsflash grits for brains, we have been telling you exactly what we're looking for when it comes to a date. All we want is a woman who's fit, friendly, and feminine. But you're too busy screaming about how we're hateful bigots for wanting a pretty woman and not settling for someone who's been run through worse than the running of the bulls. Tell me, what battle are you even fighting? You insist there's a problem, but you aren't trying to actually solve it? What is the point of all of this other than to just kick and scream? There are a lot of great women out there looking for men with your values. Go meet them, be strong in your convictions, and enjoy the life that you can create with them. Because the negativity has got to stop. Great plan. Thank you. He likes your plan, Chief. Wait, what? Go out and find a good woman and make a life with her. Oh my god, why didn't I think of that? Oh, you you truly solved the problem. Bravo, woman, bravo. But uh, here's a novel idea. Instead of bitching and moaning about all of this negativity, why don't you spread some positivity and start offering some support instead of providing so-called advice that is so bland and generic, it's borderline condescending. We've checked out because we're tired of constantly being called useless, constantly being treated like doormats, and constantly being lectured about how we have to play second fiddle to you simply because you have two X chromosomes and a mediocre pair of boobs. We're embracing masculinity because the world needs men, and we're doing this because nobody else is. And that is way more important than your ignorant kicking and screaming. And if that's bothering you, here's some novel advice for you. Just go out there and find yourself a masculine man and get married. That'll solve all your problems, you sanctimonious broad. Listen, the only thing that separates a guy and a girl is their reproductive organs and their genitals, and I assure you, y'all ain't that special you're not we don't need you we can get sperm from our own bone marrow we don't need you not even a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey. Oh, okay, cool. So you got this then. Alrighty, sweet. Oh, that's a load off. For a second there, I thought I was going to have to breed with you. Well, cool. Alright, I'm just going to go out ahead and uh, take my useless self over to my apartment and play some secret of Evermore while you go install a few septic tanks. And uh, oh, just so you know, we still rely on coal to get some of our electrical power. So if you wouldn't mind grabbing a pickaxe and heading on down to the coal mine to make sure we can keep heating our homes, that would be fantastic. Oh, yeah. And those roads, they're not going to fix them themselves, you're going to need to go ahead and pour some concrete there, sour cheeks. I hate to break it to you, but society does in fact need men. We can actually prove this with historical evidence dating back for centuries. You actually do need us. And the fact that men find you absolutely repulsive on both the inside and the out doesn't make you an expert on biology. It just makes you an embarrassment to the entire human race. And if every man left Earth for like a year, no woman would go unsatisfied. I can assure you you're not that special. So let me explain the idea of 
a man. Basically, we're going to take all the men, right? And we're going to split them into two groups. The first group is a misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, racist, sexist, fragile masculinity little who have no respect for themselves. It's like the majority of the male population. Yeah, they're all going to We don't need them. We don't need them. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. You know, it's really none of my business, but I don't think you got those lip rings attached to your face properly. I'm fairly certain those rings are meant to staple your mouth shut so you can't talk. Let's not mince words here. You're calling for genocide of an entire group of people, which is to be expected from a group who pride themselves on being loving, tolerant, and accepting of others. Now, I think it's safe to assume that though I act like I'm the universe's premier expert when it comes to the manosphere, I am, in fact, not the universe's premier expert when it comes to the manosphere. But I don't think even the most fringe extreme men of this particular corner of the internet would ever call for the calling of another group of people over something as meaningless as a political disagreement. Yet somehow we're the dangerous ones. Go figure. This other group, it's small, but that's okay. We can work with it. These guys are the guys that we feel comfortable leaving our drinks around. These are the good guys, the ones we want. Now, these guys are going to go help raise all the little boys that are born. And these little boys are going to grow up and follow in their footsteps and also become good men. And then we just have an infinite generation of good men. On any other day, that might seem strange. So simps, your plan for utopia is to use your bone marrow to produce children to be raised by simps. And then your children are gonna grow up to be incredibly weak men who will perpetuate the process. And then meanwhile, your infrastructure will collapse, your supply lines will be completely destroyed, you'll have no running water, no electricity, and no access to medical care to be able to reproduce with said bone marrow that you're desperately relying upon and wishing were an actual thing. You know what? Sure, why not? It makes about as much sense as everything else you babble on and on about. You know, I can't even fathom the sheer amount of hate you must carry in your heart in order to call for these things. You must lead an incredibly lonely and worthless life if this is how you truly feel. But I think we can all take comfort in knowing when you're trying to use your own bone marrow to get pregnant using space magic, if it ever happens, that marrow's gonna take one look at your uterus and do the same thing that men have been doing to you for years. They're just gonna take one look at you and say, no thanks, and then they will have struck one massive favor for humanity. Oh! And that is gonna do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of humor is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Let's give the good old fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for checking out the new video and until next time, peace out, homies.